this is this new entry point for vast numbers of immigrants from the Middle East. And you uh, you wonder at what point the European Union will think maybe this isn't a good idea. That's why you should read The Strange Death of Europe. I had the author on Douglas Murray, a Brit who happens to be, just so you'll understand, he goes against stereotype. His warning about the strange death of Europe, in effect, of the suicide of Europe, is not. It's not coming from the uh, an author whose credentials you would assume. Rather, uh, that is personal credentials. He is a gay atheist. Just for the record. In, in the matters of good and evil, I, I have the sad, I've drawn the sad conclusion that knowing somebody is, calls himself or herself a religious person, I'm talking about Jews and Christians, or knowing somebody is not a Jew or Christian does not necessarily predict any position. This is a, just one of those examples. Listen to this. Uh, listen to this sentence that opens a New York Times article. This is the opening of its piece. Defiant. This is the headline. Defiant. Trump laments assault on culture and revives a bogus Pershing story. Okay. The poor Pershing story. We're going to put aside for a moment. This is the opening sentence of the New York Times. Despite ongoing rebukes over his defense of white supremacists, President Trump defiantly returned to his campaign nativist themes on Thursday. All right. Now, please, I mean this, for, I mean this from the bottom of my heart and from the depths of my intellect. I ask you to please call me if he defended white supremacists. I have watched his news conferences, or his news conference, I have seen his statements. I don't see any defense of white supremacists. And I, I fully, fully acknowledge I am only one person, I might have missed it. I, so I am asking any of you, there are many of you who have ambivalence and some have hostility to the president and some even are pro the president but very disappointed in the way he has handled Charlottesville what so whatever it is if you can point to the words n not not your sentiment where he defended white supremacists then I will understand whether or not the New York Times told the truth or didn't tell the truth before I accuse the New York Times of lying in a, a news piece, not, a, not theoretically a commentary, an opinion piece, I need to know whether I am right. Despite ongoing rebukes over his defense of white supremacists, I see. Now, now I'm thinking. Actually, to be let, let me analyze it. I really have to dissect this sentence. Maybe the Times is just citing people who say he defended, but then that's not that's not an answer in defense of the Times statement. It would be despite ongoing rebukes over his alleged defense of white right, supremacists. The New York Times is writing it as if he did fight white supremacists. I have to get some uh, some people, some conservatives who don't like him, and uh, and have them uh, tell me how this in fact happened. So what's happening is, in my opinion, a hysteria has overtaken the country. The left, whose motto is. If there is a full theater, cry fire. That's really what it is. Now, here's another line. 
in this article in the New York Times. The president accused Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina, of publicity seeking and said that Mr. Graham had uttered a disgusting lie, quote-unquote, when he said, and here the New, York, the New York Times puts within M dashes, accurately, that the president had equated the white nationalist protesters in Charlottesville with the counter-protesters who were there to oppose them. But he didn't. Again, I heard everything he said. His first statement was a condemnation of all violence, and he, and he said afterwards he didn't know enough to know who had begun the fight. The Nazis, the white supremacists, these truly, truly vile human beings with a vile ideology, these people whose life is consumed with hate, mostly of Jews, but of any non-white uh, Anglo-Saxon Protestants, or Catholics, I guess, would, would fit in as well. That would be okay. If you're a Catholic, I, I don't know. The, the KKK used to hate Catholics. I don't know what the state is now with Catholics. But in any event, these people had a permit. In the United States, a permit to have speech is not a statement of support for the speech or the speaker. It is support for the principle of free speech. If you have a permit to speak, you can spew hate. About 400 of them spew came. They spewed hate. Okay, that's right. It should have been ignored. This was a gigantic national calling of all Nazis in the U.S., 400 to 500 people, I believe is the number showed up. There are 330 million Americans. There are more Americans who have visited my Martians last week, I suspect, than there are neo-Nazis. Right? It's not a defense of them. It is defense of truth, defense of sanity. They're disgusting, okay? Uh, how could I feel otherwise as, as a human being who believes that God created all people in his image? let alone how could I feel differently as a Jew, right? But I, I happen to have a commitment to truth. The president spoke originally saying he condemns all violence. That is not a defense of Nazis. Then he gave a speech in which he condemned Nazis and white supremacists. But that was not enough either. And then they write here, it was what Lindsey Graham said was a disgusting lie, because Lindsey, the president spoke so passionately about his pain over the death of that young woman there. The president equated the white nationalist protesters. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's not honest reporting. He wanted to know who, who started the fight. And as I said from the beginning, well, I especially with the, well, no, no, I, I said at the beginning, I was thinking I said it with regard to the Durham statue, where are the police? And the answer is, in cities run by Democrats, the police are told not, not to do anything if leftists show up not to do anything on campuses, not to do anything when they close down a bridge in, in the Bay Area of California, San Francisco Bay Area. The, uh, it's, we're living in a world of lies. Cleveland Clinic announced it was pulling out of a 2018 fundraiser at his Mar Lago Club in Palm Beach, Florida. American Cancer Society planned its 2018 gala at Mar-a-Lago, announced it would to change the venue, citing its values and commitment to diversity. The American Cancer Society's commitment to diversity. Yep. Oh, I really want to take your calls. 1-8 Prager 776.
Hi, everybody. I'm listening. I'm listening. That is the first time I did that. I'm listening to the Dennis Prager Show. And I think you should, too. That's really funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm so, uh, what I'm, uh, I think the I'm, how did I come, to, how did the I'm coming out? I think I am awaiting a call. And I, I don't even argue. I, I need to understand why people like the New York Times are writing that he defended, what is the actual word here? That he had defended white supremacists. I, I, I need to hear. Somebody out there must, I mean, it's hard to get in. That's the problem here. Yes. I need to find out. By the way, there was an attack in Finland today. Somebody stabbed seven people. One of them was stabbed to death. If I find out anything more, I will let you know. Here's, a, here's another example of how the media covers things, and it really it bothers me. In the, uh, at CNN. Because there's Wolf Blitzer, for whom I have uh, affection. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, by the way, I want I want to tell you I hit this one out of the ballpark. I very rarely predict, but I predicted just the day before that when a uh, an Islamic terrorist does this, they're going to say, "Ah, look, it happens in America too with white supremacists," and uh, and indeed that is exactly what uh, they did on CNN. I want you to hear this. It's it's mind-boggling. How many attacks have there been by Islamic terrorists, massacres of dozens of people, right? In Nice, France, in Berlin, and elsewhere, uh, with vehicles. But listen to the way CNN reported it yesterday. In light of the, the uproar of the last several days, five days apart, you have a white supremacist in Charlottesville use a vehicle to kill, and here you have attackers at least following the modus operandi uh, of terrorists using vehicles uh, apparently to kill as well. And, and, and it's that sh- the, the, those shared tactics uh, that, that should be alarming. Yeah, and there will be questions about copycats. There will be questions if uh, what happened... Uh, in Barcelona, uh, was at all, at all, uh, a copycat version of what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia, even though there may be different characters, different political ambitions. Uh, they use uh, the same, uh, the same killing device, a vehicle going at, at high speed into a group, a large group of pedestrians. Really? Copycat. Copycat. One guy did this in the United States of America. This has been repeated and repeated and repeated in Europe prior to that. And now, all of a sudden, the Islamic car terror, van terror, truck terror is copycat? Well, why didn't he simply say, and I, that since they've been doing this for years now in, in, uh, in Europe, you know, it's obviously not related to anything that happened in the U.S. I mean, that, that's just... Whatever your whatever your politics may be, my friends, it's hysteria again. It's hysteria time, but it works. It affects it affects people. Take the media seriously, even Republicans. It's too bad. My little microcosm. The way the New York Times and the L.A. Times and NPR covered me because of my concert with the Santa Monica Symphony Orchestra two nights ago. It's a perfect example. New York Times lied, L-I-E-D. Prager suggested that same-sex marriage will lead to incest. And guess what? In the reporting of my concert, selling out the Walt Disney, the Walt Disney Concert Hall, that is exactly what the Fox in L.A. did. The guy who looked at the New York Times said, Prager, who has publicly said, went from suggested to publicly said, that same-sex marriage will lead to incest. Nevertheless, sold out the ho- da 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 
This is it. This is what happens. They make up a lie about people they differ with, and then the entire chorus of the herd, it's a herd, the media, repeats it. The president, the, the president defended white supremacists in the in the Charlottesville Institute in, 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 in this particular conflagration in this incident. The, the president defended white supremacists. The president defended people who want his uh, his family dead, his daughter, his son-in-law, his grandchildren. That, that would be quite something, isn't it? Well, it's happened before. I'm thinking of, uh, of Jews who defend uh, um, Hezbollah and Hamas. I guess there's an example of people who defend people who want them dead. But I don't think that that applies here. There's a lot of sickness a lot of sickness going around. Uh, there's an article, believe it or not, in the New York Times that the ACLU has to rethink free speech. That is the title of the piece. Needless to say, it is by a uh, an individual, I don't know if male or female, a critical race studies fellow at the UCLA School of Law. The left has taken over a lot of law schools like it has other universities. It's just, it's astonishing to watch it happening. It is astonishing. The president asked a question about statues. Will we take down the statues of Jefferson and Washington? New York Times editorial mocks the question. Why? Why is it a mockery? The popular left-wing website Vice called for blowing up the uh, Mount Rushmore. Then they took it down, or then they modified their language. But that's and they, there's a, uh, a woman member of the uh, assembly in Missouri who called for the assassination of the president. She won't. She won't resign. How about this, New York Times? New York Times. Cheryl Gay Stolberg of the New York Times tweeted: "The hard left seemed as hate-filled as alt-right." I saw a club-wielding, antifa-beating white nationalists being let out of the park. Is she a defender of Nazis? Hi, everybody. Uh, you're listening to the Dennis Prager Show. I'm still trying to get a call to hear anybody who can defend the New York Times claim and the repeated claims of the media that the president defended white supremacists. And I mean it. I, I The reason I'm asking is that you know, if you are surrounded by people who say, look, you know, I, I see a zebra with uh, violet and white stripes. Every, everybody is saying there's a zebra with violet and white stripes. Then people believe there's a zebra with violet and white stripes. So I, I just want to know, why am I missing it? And I, I'm, I'm not being cute. I have no desire to engage in sarcasm in this regard. I just I want to understand, what am I missing? I must be missing something because... It is now accepted as a given that the president defended Nazis and white supremacists who were not Nazis, just white supremacists. I, I did not hear such a defense. So either I am listening with jaundiced ears, with agenda-driven ears, which is possible and would be shameful if I did, or I didn't hear something that everybody else did. Or we're bathing in a lie. There, I can't think of a fourth possibility. 
it's, but uh, nobody has. Everybody's calling in with, uh, with uh, totally understandably, with your views on the issue. But uh, and it doesn't appear that any, any. Maybe this is as close to an explanation as I'll get right now. Molt, is it Molten, New Jersey? Molten. Molten. How do you spell it? M a r l t o n. M a r l t o n. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, having spent the all of yesterday uh, attempting to administer medicine to the dead, I discovered what you missed. I found that they have all latched on to the fact that Mr. Trump has said that there are good people on both sides, and they take that as a defense of Nazis, because everyone that was in Charlottesville it was obviously a Nazi to them. That's what you missed. Yeah, no, but I didn't miss that. I, I am aware, and I thank you. I, I am aware. He never said Nazis are good people. His implication was that there are people who marched, yeah, I think, in defense of, this, of a statue, right? I think that that was the ostensible reason for the march. That if you march for, I'm not saying he's right. I don't know, I don't know all of the people who marched. It's, and it's, but the, he did acknowledge on both sides, there were, in other words, it wasn't just Antifa people who are very dangerous to this society. These are people who advocate violence, who engage in it. They are, they are equivalent to the communists. They're vile. They are very frightening human beings. They are filled with hate every bit as much as white supremacists. They, they breathe hate. They live for it. And they, but they have far more support than the Nazis do. But the president nevertheless pointed out there were people who, who demonstrated uh, on that side who were good people because they had a, they had, they're not filled with hate, but they do have a hatred, which I have, of white supremacists. You know, it's so, it's so interesting how reason is not, a, it's no, not an issue in America anymore. It is all passion. Colleges graduate people who are told... And I've pointed this out my entire career. People graduate high schools and colleges with the belief that what they feel is accurate. It's one of the most dangerous parts of the secularization of life. I'll explain when we come back. Hi, everybody. You're listening to the Dennis Prager Show, and Hillsdale is quite an organization. This terrific college that takes no money from the government and gives these free courses and these free issues of Imprimus to people. They're a loyal sponsor of the show, and I am a loyal adherent of them. I got the Imprimus well before. I think I have Imprimus since before I was broadcasting. That weekly, excuse me, monthly compendium. It's not a compendium. No, it's not. It's one one speech. They just send you a speech in writing. You can carry it with you because it, it's it's not on it's it's on like what be eight and a half by four instead of eight and a half by eleven or, or eleven by four. Well, anyway, it's easily tucked into your purse or your pocket, and. You do it all by Prager for Hillsdale, and you get to sign up for their 15-minute courses. God, do we need knowledge of America now. So that's PragerForHillsdale.com for the great stuff that they do. Dennis Prager here. And there is a piece in the New York Times on Antifa. And how they have no problem about using violence. The people support it. They're getting bigger. You see, why are they getting bigger? Well, there are a lot of reasons. But one of the biggest is the left uses the Nazis and the white supremacists as a feeder to its hate. That's what it does. I'm referring to Antifa. And the non-Antifa left, which feeds... Antifa by this 
screaming fire in a crowded theater. This country is not threatened at this time by Nazis. It doesn't in any way mitigate their evil. All right? The country is not, this country is not threatened by typhoons, to the best of my knowledge. Typhoons hit other places in the world. Typhoons are terrible. But they're not a great danger to the United States. It doesn't mitigate the horror of a typhoon if it does hit you. You know, it's really, it, 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 the whole thing is an element of, of fraud and the em, naked emperor. President Obama left this country disunited racially greater than any president of my lifetime. But uh, they love him on the left. They love him because he's articulate and he's Democrat and he's on the left and he's black and he meets all the criteria that they love. Not even black. I think not white is more important to the left than even black. It's all. It's we live in a great country, in a great country, and the leftist description of it is of a hellhole. It's a hellhole, unless you are a beneficiary of white privilege. That is that is the way in which. The lying left describes this country. It's a hellhole for the non-recipients of white privilege. It's what kids are taught in, in college, now in high school as well. And some of them then join a group like Antifa. You know how much evil has been done by the left in the name of being opposed to fascism? When the left is the mother of fascism, read Jonah Goldberg's liberal fascism. Read, uh, read Dinesh D'Souza's new book, The Big Lie. Well, I don't give you a lot of facts about these matters. I'm looking for the uh, statement here. Antifa adherents, some armed with sticks and masked in bandanas, played a visible role in the running street battles in Charlottesville. Its followers acknowledge it as secretive, without official leaders and organized into autonomous local cells. It is only it is also only one of in a constellation of activist movements that have come together in the past several months to fight the far right. By the way, what makes white supremacists far right? It's an interesting question. What, what part of conservatism adheres to a racist idea? They hate capitalism. I mean, if you listen to their, their words, they sound, they sound like the far left, except that they have the racist component, which is exactly what, the, what they are. They are far leftists with racism. That is what the Nazis were. Far national socialism. Nazism means national socialism. It differed from communism with regard to race. It's a big difference, I fully acknowledge. But that, that was the difference. Although, although the communists were... Uh, had their uh, very strong element of, uh, of anti-Semitism as well. My friends, we are really living through hysteria. I've been saying this all as, because all of these things have been hysteria. And people get caught up in it. They give, uh, what is it now? What did Apple just give a million dollars? Oh, yes, to the Southern Poverty Law Center. That's mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Like it is some moral institution monitoring hate. It called Ayan Hersi Ali a hater. She's on their list of people who hate. 
one of the most wonderful women in the world. You're listening to the Dennis Prager Show. Hi, everybody. I want to read to you again Dennis Prager here. A tweet by New York Times writer Cheryl Gay Stolberg. The hard left seemed as hate-filled as alt-right. I saw a club wielding Antifa beating white nationalists being led out of the park. And that's provided, I got that courtesy of a Ben Shapiro broadcast. And who Ben is very strongly committed to intellectual honesty on these matters. And I, I like to, I think I'll have him on next week. I, I need to discuss this stuff with him because it's I really, really just want to arrive at the truth and at the moral truth. First, before moral truth, you have to know the facts. And then there's moral truth. What, what do those who want good do? What do we say? And so forth. I have no respect for the media. Please understand that. Whatever they say, I assume, is fraudulent. If it is about anything with regard to left-right differences, or to the president, obviously. If the media report... Um, as I always tell you, a coup in Paraguay, I assume it's largely accurate. On anything else, I assume it's not accurate. I mean, Steve Bannon is out. That's the breaking news. Okay. It uh, it, it won't it doesn't it won't matter to the left. They will just regard it as another victory for themselves. None, none of these things matter. The president is not covered with any degree of intellectual honesty by the media. It's a very bad thing when people who have no commitment to truth teach your children. When people with no commitment to truth provide you with all the news you have. It's a very big crisis for a society. It is part of why Douglas Murray wrote his book, The Strange Death of Europe. And it can happen here. That's the worry. Prager University, by the way, is trying to teach the truth. August is fundraising month. Why don't you call now? 3235 Prager and make a donation.